Good morning. Morning. Thanks Good morning. to everyone for joining us again. We are here. It's already the middle of March. So we're going to have one today, and then we're going to wrap up March's education next week with two additional um, virtual classes, which I'll post on social media for you all. Um, today, we are going to have the um, high lift class with Jesse from our artistic team. Um, and then she's going to go through the class. We're going to work it the same way that we have, where you can use the chat box, and I'll interrupt Jesse um, with any questions or comments that you all have. So please feel free to ask away. That's what this class is for. So we'd love to have you all join the chat box as much as you can and um, ask any questions you have, and we'll try to get them all answered. So Jesse, if you'd like to start, you can go ahead. Good morning, everybody. So today, um, I'm excited to share with you guys more and dive a little bit deeper on the high lift. So hold on here one second. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to see what, make sure I can see what you guys are seeing. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. And like Natalie said, you guys, I know um, we've got a nice size group on today, but I really want to make sure everybody really leaves feeling more knowledgeable about the 12 series and high lift. So I want to make sure that we're all good and um, any questions that you guys have can get answered. So I'm just going to share my We have a couple of people unmuted. All right. Can everybody give a thumbs up if you see the screen and the presentation? Perfect. Okay. So again, like I said, we're going to talk about high lift and what just some cool ways to be able to use it. But also I think situations when it's going to be the tool that you choose um, or one of the tools you choose versus when it wouldn't be a tool that you would choose. Because I feel like sometimes the 12 series are a tool that expectations of the product and what it can do, um, the expectations are set high, almost like bleach. And it's not bleach, it's a high lift cream color. Um, so let's just get into that. I always like to say like what to remember, um, what, when, and why would I use it? How do I use it? What's my application option? And how do, how do we time for it? What's the processing time? So what, when, and why? What is it? It's a maximum lift, maximum control. Meaning if we compare it to um, bleach, right? A powdered lightener, we are more in the situation of maximum lift, absolutely no control. Um, we know that the rough bleach lightener has a blue violet anti-yellow um, in it for when you get up into your level nines and tens, it will help to try to counteract a bit of the yellow. But when we think about the fact of lifting, um, usually you would choose high lift for two or more levels lighter when your target is two or I would say two to four levels lighter and you are not looking for a white blonde, right? So you're looking to get the most lift you can possibly get, but you're also looking for control in that formula. So almost like a lift in tone in one. Um, you are definitely going to get lighter results with use, utilizing the 12 series than you would just using the one through tens on their own. And what I mean by that is a lot of times I will talk to hairdressers that will say something like, um, I have a level five and she wants to be a level eight. So I'm using 30 or 40 volume 
with 811 in a one to one and a half mixing ratio. And she's not getting light enough and it's not controlled enough. Normally in those situations, high lift will be your best friend um, when you are aiming for um, anywhere from two to four levels of lift, sometimes five, depending on hair texture. Um, and here's the thing, I'm gonna show you guys some pictures as we go, but I think to understand um, what is the control in the high lifts, right? So we've got five choices to choose from. Um, we've got our 12-1-1 being most control into a 12-1, a 12-2-1, 12-3, and 12.0. Um, so we have high lifts that will give us very intense control. And then we have high lifts that will give us little to none. Um, and sometimes that's exactly what we need and what we want. And then I also really like to bundle the neutral booster into this category because when I'm not using the neutral booster to shear out another shade or create a lighter shade, um, neutral should be always mixed like a high lift, right? It should be mixed with a 30 or 40 volume and it should be mixed two and a half times the developer. So it's another tool that will give me pure lift with no control, but it's not as much lift and it's not as aggressive as bleach. So don't forget that it's a, it's like my sixth high lift. And then I like this slide because it gives you guys an idea if we had to try to visualize what the control is in the 12 series and how much of it is in the 12 series. Meaning 12-1-1, if you guys can see in the little cylinders, has the most control of a blue green ash, right? But it's also the most control, meaning that tube contains a higher amount of control than 12-1 does. It's not just that it's a different tonality, it's that it's more of it in the tube. And then when you drop to 12-1, you're using that blue-green ash again, but it's not a double pigment. Um, but there's also a little bit less of it. And then when we drop into 12-2-1, right, we're in our pearl, which is a blue-violet, and then that ash of a blue-green, but it's even less, into 12-3, into 12-0. So understand that when you are grabbing your tubes, you're not just choosing your control shade, you're also choosing how much control. So I'm a big one that loves to intermix these 12 series. Again, just like everything else within REF, within the permanent line, um, they give us like a great core, but then we can intermix to create our own. So you could cr create other 12 series, right? And have feel more creative and flexible being able to do that. So I want to just show you guys some visuals here of what's achievable with 12 series, right? Because I think, and that's a big thing, I think showing stylists, but also when we're talking to our clients, um, there's a lot of hair out there right now that is not just bleach work. It's not just decolorized with a powder lightener. Um, it's they're decolorizing with different tools because we all know that the prettiest colors out there are multidimensional. And to me, multi-dimensional is three tones or more. So we're looking at, you know, maybe whatever their base shade is, a mid-tone and then a high tone. Um, so when you see the caramels in this girl on the left, right, she's got a, she might have two different shades um, in there. One of them might be a powdered lightener, but the other one isn't. And you have to understand when you're seeing those multi-dimensional tones in the hair, we know that if we just go in with bleach on a base level five, six, whatever, and lift and then tone, we only end up with two colors. But if I have a base color, I have a 12 series or another tone, and then I have my bleach, when the finished result is done, when I get done glossing regardless, I'm gonna have three colors, right? And you can definitely see it in this middle girl 
right? Whether she was maybe glossed differently, some people would say, no, that was all bleach. And then they just glossed with two different glosses, maybe. But I can also tell that that's her natural color, right? Up at her scalp. And for me, it wouldn't make sense um, if I'm going to really take the integrity of the hair into consideration, it would make more sense to use um, a high lift and then a powdered lightener up front and a high lift in back. So these are just visuals to show like what is definitely achievable with the 12 series on your darker hair levels, right? And then again, here's some more. I definitely um, love the Jessica Alba because I can see on her um, personally to me, that would be a balayage that was maybe getting a 12 series um, closer to the scalp and then feathered out into a powdered lightener on the ends. Um, you guys in your Bali work and foilage and everything else that's happening out there and how all of this is transitioning, um, 12 series melted out into a powdered lightener will be your guys' best friend. Um, it's a great way to get a really soft melty effect. And if you guys are seeing what's happening with the trends and these bronze um, and the bronze hair plus the brand hair, right? The brunette um, blondes, nothing, um, it, there, there's definitely still like a, the white blonde trend, silver hair is finally going away. Um, but you have a lot of clients that they don't want the maintenance of a level 55, I always say, um, in their hair. They just want these beautiful golden caramel reflection. Um, and the 12 series will get you there. Um, so I definitely invite you guys, if you haven't played with the 12 series, um, to do it. And I'll give you guys some ideas on ways to start to incorporate it into your formulas. I think JLo is a great example of, um, she has times where she goes into this amazing bronze goddess um, look, you know, whether she keeps her, some of her natural base in there, um, like she has on the, the picture on the left, or she goes for it and does the high lift as her background color and then highlights on top of it. Um, so definitely achievable with 12 series to get these looks on your darker hair levels. Again, here's some great images where I think that a 12 series and a powdered lightener were incorporated. So when we're talking about ways of you guys being able to go in and try, like how I always say with the 12 series, if you don't, well, with any color, right? If you don't use it, you won't use it. Because the big thing I think with 12 series is some people think, I don't know what it will do, so I'm not going to use it. But then you'll never use it. So what I invite you guys to do is every third foil, start incorporating a 12 series. Even if it's, are we all good? Are we all good? Oh, somebody's not muted. Here. Now we're good? Okay. Um, so you guys, you go in and use your powder lightener like you always have, balayage like you always have, do your baby lights, do your teasy lights, whatever it is. But I invite you to either try every third foil melting a 12 series out into a powdered lightener or just do a small weave of the 12 series. And a lot of times what I'll tell people is it makes more sense if the client is a little bit darker below the parietal ridge and lighter up top. So maybe you've always done powdered lightener and bleach. So in this situation, maybe from parietal ridge down, every other or every third foil incorporate that 12 series. And as soon as you hit parietal ridge, go back up into just your powdered lightener. It's a great way to add it in 
to see what the end result is and then to know what happens. So you can say, okay, now I know what the capability of 12 series is. Um, I think when I describe 12 series to a lot of my clients, if, if we don't have pictures, um, I always say that 12 series will give this light, bright, sunshiny effect to the hair, right? Where bleach can give a much a, a bright white um, cooler effect to the hair, right? And as soon as I say sunshiny and golden and a week in Mexico kind of thing, then they start to be able to visualize what 12 series can do. Um, 12 series can look much more natural than bleach, um, much softer than bleach. And it's a great way to transition, especially if you have someone that's darker, that's looking to go lighter, um, a great way to start to transition the hair because it's not as aggressive as traditional powdered lightener. Right. I also think that there's definitely a 12 series going on in both of these beautiful ladies, right? That's not just bleach. Um, you can really see it in Cameron. Um, Cameron actually, it looks like there's some low lights in there, there's some highlights, and then there's definitely this warm, buttery color in her hair um, that's super complementary to her skin tone. I think if her hair was just snow white, um, it wouldn't be as soft. I definitely think that there's certain age groups and certain skin types that can handle um, just looking like a level 10, right? And it's a more, I would say, fashion forward look. But I definitely think the 12 series gives this softness and this glow um, to clients that's really complimentary. I know that I did this class um, for a distributor oh a month and a half ago and it was amazing the feedback i got that people were like i made myself do it i did it i incorporated the 12 series into my client i didn't tell them you know some people have the clients they're nervous to say something to some stylists told the other their clients that they were you know they wanted to just try something a little bit different but the client would still feel light and bright every single client loved it Loved it, loved it, right? So we know that if we have the client that's like, oh, it's not white enough, it's not light enough, it's not, it needs to be lighter, 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 cooler, 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 ashy, ashy. Okay, that's not a 12 series person. But there's a lot of clients um, that that's not the case and that they would really embrace this, um, trying something new in their hair. Um, these were also some images and this was just a good visual. I know some of this is colored hair that then they went lighter down the road, but just showing you guys, I think what is achievable, right? Like Blake Lively, um, when she goes blonde, especially lately, um, she's done warmer, more golden, almost this fawny, really soft, um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a really soft, sun-kissed, gingery blonde. Um, and I think it's super complimentary on her skin tone. It gives her this really soft glow. It makes her blue eyes pop. So there's definitely situations where it's doable. And then the model, I don't know her name, but down below, um, that is definitely 12 series and high lift that's being utilized on her head. Um, there's no way that you could, she could just take a 30 volume and a level eight, nine in a regular um, permanent color and end up with a base like that. So 12 series is definitely being utilized, um, which I think she's a great example. There's some bleach work around her face um, and on some of her ends, but bleach is not the only thing that is being used to create that lightness. Again, some more images. I hope these are kind of starting to make sense. You guys aren't seeing any white, white, cool, ashy blondes. You are seeing um, caramel, butterscotch, golden, um, fawny, those kind of tones, right? Um, but they're beautiful. 
Um, Jennifer, I think this is a great image. That is for sure a 12 series at her scalp. Now we all know, and I have an image of her coming up, what she looks like bleached um, to a platinum blonde, but that is a 12 series at the scalp and it's beautiful, it's shiny, um, it's, it's got some warmth to it, but it's not overly warm. Does anybody have any questions so far? I see comments down below. I'm just Jesse, you have one question um, from Connie. What if they have resistant gray? Mm. That's a good question. So, well, I think gray or resistant gray is a good conversation to have with a client, right? Because if a client comes into me and she has gray hair um, present, right? And she's showing me pictures of blondes. Usually the client needs to make the, we have to find what the priority is. Is the priority that every gray is 100% covered or that every dark hair has been made lighter, right? So it's having that conversation and consultation with the client because 99% of the time, the clients that come in that show us a picture of a blonde and they have dark hair present, but they also have gray, being a blonde is their priority. It's not that the grays cover. Um, obviously, if you start to get up into the, I would say 60 to 70% gray, 12 series wouldn't be your tool of choice anyway because the majority of the hair needs to actually be made um, darker. And, but when you're, that's, I would say definitely at the 50% mark, um, I have quite a few clients that I still use the 12 series on because it doesn't do nothing to the gray hairs. Um, it gives this beautiful re reflection and they almost look like, like a highlight. Um, on resistant gray hair, I guess I would need to know, Connie, what the, what more of what the scenario is. I mean, is it that 10% or 20% of the hairs are resistant and the other 80% needs to be lightened? Because again, whether it's resistant or not, um, the whole goal is that those white hairs um, end up blending in and looking like a highlight. Um, and most clients, that's what they're, that's what they want. So hopefully that answers your question. So Connie just added on, she said it's kind of 10%. It's more like this pat the patches over by your temples. Yeah, I would let those blend in. I mean, if everything else was okay, so let's say it's headband, right? She's really white and really um, resistant through here, then I'm probably two different formulas. Um, I may go in with my gray coverage um, formula through those sides um, and then work my 12 series through the back. Um, and I have some clients that I put the gray coverage on first in those temples, work your 12 series throughout and then overlap the 12 series on top of your gray coverage once it's gotten maybe a 10, 15 minute head start, just to make sure the colors all tie together. I have a quick question, Jesse. It, you could you saying for the neutral, um, the neutral, you mix it as a high lift. You can mix the neutral in with the regular shades as well to soften them. So. In the formula, are you mixing that as a high lift and then putting it together? You're not mixing it like if you're going to add that into your, it's above and above, above the um, formula for the one through 10 series, right? You want to mix some of that into the one through 10 series? Right. So if you're using the neutral to create a lighter tone, it is just inside the formula. It's just part of the formula. You're usually replacing um, a quarter of the formula with neutral. So an example that we use in the classes a lot is 753. 
So if I wanted to make an 853, I would do 15 grams of 753, five grams of neutral, and then one and a half parts, 10, 20, 30 volume developer. So the neutrals inside the formula. Okay, thank you. And and can would you ever, um, you're gonna talk about putting, I guess maybe eventually, um, getting ahead. I'm sure you're gonna talk about putting the concentrates in or you don't use those, the pastels, like if you wanted to do something more with the uh, high lifts, you wanted. Yes, we are okay. gonna talk about that here in just a second. Okay, great, thank you. Yep. Okay, so you can start to see the difference here in something that looks much more to me. This almost looks like raw, <laughs> raw untoned um, bleached hair. Okay, especially, um, is it Jessica? Isn't this Justin's wife, I think? Yeah. So anyway, um, that looks pretty raw, right? It looks a little bit more yellowy gold on the mid. It looks quite bright and light at her scalp. Um, that's called banding. <laughs> but she was probably in a process of working through um, getting darkness off of her hair. But I think it's pretty easy to tell um, what bleach work looks like versus 12 series work, right? Um, I think the picture of Jennifer on the far right again um, shows you a difference versus if we go backwards to her here, there's definitely a difference. Okay, again, bleached hair, it's much easier. Uh, it stands out more. It's, um, I don't wanna say it's severe. It, it, it's more of a high fashion look when you are trying to go all over as light as possible, right? And, and you lose dimension in the hair, okay? Again, I wanted to show a picture of JLo not using 12 series, right? And using bleach. There's a very different look to her hair and to the tonality and the color of it when we, when we are trying to compare like, how do I know if it's bleach versus how do I know if it's a 12 series? Um, it's pretty, um, it's pretty in your face, right? And here's my thing, you guys, that I try to get people to understand and grasp is if you bleach hair, say that you bleach a level six and, the, and you're looking for a really pretty caramely level eight, right? So to bleach it to a 10, to bring it back down to an eight, when you're thinking about integrity of the hair, um, that doesn't really necessarily make sense to go that far beyond what you really wanna be. I always say, I like to lift and hover a half level to almost a level above my target so that when my control or my gloss comes back down on top of it, I, I have room to adjust in tone, right? So you always wanna blow past your target a little bit to come back down. But when you're blowing past two levels, um, three levels sometimes to come back down, it, it wasn't really necessary to put the hair in that state when we have something that could have just brought them right about to where we wanted to be and come back down, okay? Um, so think about that too, if you're lifting and bleaching, but you really didn't need to, to use bleach, there's other tools. And, you know, if you're already lifting and toning with bleach, I have situations where I use the 12 series to lift me and then I come back down on top of it with a gloss, that's okay. I still am using a gentler option on the hair in a lot of situations. And I know for some people they're like, yeah, but does 12 series lift through previous color? I mean, I'll always stick with the rule of thumb is color doesn't lift color, right? 
But if we go back to basics of what is developers jobs, right? Developer or hydrogen peroxide has two jobs always. Its first job, right? Is to go in and diffuse and lighten natural pigments, okay? And then to oxidize the artificial. But when you're in a two and a half times 30 or 40 volume developer, that developer doesn't know the difference between diffusing artificial or diffusing natural, right? And so you can shear out and clear out old colors, um, not to the ability of bleach. And I think it, it really depends on what product was used, how many layers are on the hair, um, what's the health of the hair, right? But if I, have I had 12 series budge through old color? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I can't say I'm ever trying to use a 12 series over a tinted level five, but I've definitely used 12 series over a tinted level eight. And it's definitely went in and moved things around for me and given me a little bit more room to play. So um, keep that in mind too. So this is kind of um, what Glory was just asking as far as um, other ways of utilizing the 12 series, right? So this is just some pictures of some work that I've done utilizing the 12 series in certain situations. Um, my girl Ashley on the left, like she, she can't be orange enough. And actually this isn't the, even the most current picture of her. I should get the newest one up, but um, she wants it like glowing, flaming like a fire and um, what I found was when I was using the permanent line on her scalp and then glossing her ends, which I was trying to always do to save time um, together, I was never getting this intensity that the directs give at her scalp like I was on her ends. And so what we started doing was taking um, 846 and 744 with a 30 volume, okay? And then I guess if I wanna give you guys like the true formula on her, we were using five grams of 846, five grams of 744, 10 grams of 12.3, because it has that gold background, okay? to 50 grams of 40 volume. So the idea with this was I wanted to be able to lift her much lighter and much brighter, right? I used 40 volume, I'm not really aiming. She's a natural level six, probably 35% sparkle, right? My goal is to lift her light and bright quickly and be able to rinse it off and then deposit a direct down on top of it to be able to get that glow. So we literally would put her color on and within 15 minutes of processing, we would rinse. Now that's not the traditional way that you use 12 series and we'll talk about traditional timing, but when we understand how the product works and what it can do, when you use two and a half times 30 or 40 volume, it is fast, it is a super fast lift. So you're really getting um, the first 15 minutes is lift in your high lift products. The last um, 30 to 40 minutes is deposit. Okay, so the idea behind that is I was utilizing the high lifts to lift her light and bright, little bit of target in there just because, and then rinsing it once I got this kind of glowing scalp so that I could put the directs over the top of it and get something much brighter and more intense, right? Where bleach wasn't needed for that, but the, the traditional um, creams in one through 10 weren't giving me the intensity because they're not the same type of dyes um, as the directs. So I got the best of both worlds by lifting and creating this light, bright, um, foundation and then being able to come down on top of it 
with my directs to make it much more bright. Okay. Um, in the image in the middle, this is being able to incorporate the 12 series with other shades, right? So um, this client was originally on natural level six, her entire head, except for a very few pieces up front, um, she was all high lift. We had virgin hair, I got very, very lucky. Um, she wanted a playful rose gold. And so we incorporated um, a few different formulas in her formula um, or in her overall color, right? But this was examples of taking the 12 series with fashion colors, meaning one of her formulas was 1221 and 622. The one little trick that I can tell you guys when you do utilize it, where you're going to let it sit the full amount of time and let the 12 series do what they really are meant to do is the 12 series, whatever one you choose needs to outweigh your regular one through 10 shade, right? It needs to be the dominant um, shade in your formula. So example, I always go off, I like to mix 20 grams of my 12 series to 50 grams of my developer. So her formula, one of her formulas was 15 grams of 1221 to five grams of 622, okay? And that what you're seeing is actually the pink tone in her hair, okay? The more violety tone that you're seeing was actually what was done in her gloss on the back half of her head that I kept off of the bright pieces up front. So she had two different glosses that went on at the bowl. Um, so utilizing different things like that will give you different effects in the hair. Um, and 622-555-922, um, I love, love, love to use them when we're looking for those light um, peachy rose gold kind of tones. It gives you a clear, lighter, more feminine end result versus it being too dingy or too dark. Was someone gonna ask a question? No, I heard a microphone turn on. Um, so just, just remember, if you want to start playing with ways of doing that, it's a great way to be able to lift hair um, nice and light and then come back down with a little bit of target in there. So it gives it this new nuance, this new shade that doesn't really exist within the ref line. You've created it on your own. Um, another way that I really like to use them is I have someone that we're working on actually right now. She came in an hour before I started the Zoom and I'm gonna show you guys a picture. And I thought what might be fun is I'm gonna show you guys how she started when she came in today. Um, we did a huge haircut and cut all of the blonde off of her, but I want to show you guys. I'm going to tell you what we did with her formula, and then um, I will post her finished pictures. But this is my client, Michelle. Okay. Michelle gets her hair done at least this last time, once a year. Um, so you can see we have well over a year of outgrowth. Um, she is thick, dense, natural level two. Okay. Jesse, I, I'm not sure we're on your, we're still on the redhead slide. Oh, you, okay. hold on. Sorry. <laughs> That's funny. I'm like in here showing it on my phone. Yeah, no, we get. There you go. Right? I'm trying to not let the ring light get in the way. And then, so we cut all of that blonde off, you guys. She's like a chin length bob right now. There was a little blonde left in her crown, but she's a natural level two, thick, dense, coarse. And we're using the 12 series. 90% um, of what's on her head is 12 series. And then we are going in with a fine weave um, 
uh, we're leaving a section out. So we, I'll start over here just so I don't confuse people. So I mixed up um, formula. Natalie, can't wait to see what you do with that client. Yes. So one of the things, so how we started was I mixed, and you guys are going to go, wait, hold on. We need to talk about this. But again, utilizing 12 series to do something for me so that I don't have to use bleach on her entire head or to do something that the one through tens mixed traditionally, I can't do. So I did 10 grams of 1211, 10 grams of 611, five grams of jade from the pastels to 50 grams of 40 volume. That was run, um, I kept it about three quarters, half an inch to three quarters of an inch off of her scalp. And we worked it from that area out through her ends, okay, with 40 vowel. Then I mixed that exact same formula with 30 volume and we went in and applied it to her um, scalp area. Some people will say, oh, because you don't want her to get a hot root, that's why you drop the developer down because of her body heat. It's a more, it's not so much about hot roots, meaning body heat. What it's about is you have soft keratin at that first half inch, and then it hardens over time. So you get a harder keratin and soft keratin. And that's why they react differently. And we say hot roots, um, but it's not really about body heat. It's that the keratin root root. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, it's not really about the fact that there's that body heat is playing in. It's about the keratinized hair and whether it's soft or hard. Um, so 10 grams of 1211, 10 grams of 611, five grams of jade to 50 grams of 40 volume on the mid and ends and 30 at the scalp. Once that all was on from scalp to end, we are going through horizontally all the way up and around on a horizontal sections. Um, and we are leaving out a section and then we are doing just a soft weave and really feathering it towards the scalp to keep her grow out soft and I don't want that bleached look all the way up to her scalp. I just want something really soft that already kind of looks lived in on her. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to give her a really heavy fringe. So we worked horizontally all the way up and around kind of like a Rolodex. And then I'm going to work horizontally this way, or I guess vertically, depending on how you're talking about it, um, through her fringe just to give her some softness. So I'm excited because as soon as I'm finished with you guys, um, I've got an awesome girl working with me that's also helping. We will get um, pictures out so you guys can see what it does. But to speak to, wait a minute, you just said your 12 series has to outweigh, um, has to outweigh your product and then you just told us that in this formula that it's not right um what i mean is in, for these fashion end results and to get as light and as bright um, as possible your 12 series needs to outweigh in my situation with a level two very coarse um dense hair my goal is just to get michelle's level two to a believable five six background with soft highlights going through it. I want her to be this bronzy, caramely brunette. Um, and if I get a few little level nine highlights in there, great. But if I don't, I'm coming from jet black hair. I need to be realistic and set my expectations um, at a level that they can actually be achieved. And also for me, when Michelle and I talked, her ends were quite light. It felt like melted Barbie hair. Um, and she 
we used a translator app and she, I just said, you know, realistically trying to make, take you from a two to an eight for your background and then have your highlights at a level 10, it's just not doable. Your hair is not going to be in good shape and you're only getting it done maybe twice a year. So we need to be more realistic about what's possible. Um, know you guys that when we worked mid to end, um, we were isolating in papers, um, just to, to really get that product to do what it needs to do. Um, so we did isolate within papers. I don't really like to use tin foil with the 12 series on darker hair because I feel like the body heat with tin foil does create more lift and more warmth. And my whole goal with her is, I mean, I want, I'm fine with warm, golden, coppery, bronzy tones, um, but I also want it to look on purpose and not just like raw lift and underlying pigment exposure. So I tend to use papers more than tin foil. So hopefully we'll get her done and I'll be able to post some pictures. But um, this girl on the right too is a great example for you guys to see. You can tell how coarse and dense her hair is. So she was a fun one to be able to use the 12 series on um, and just create different tones. Um, so in some areas we used 30 volume, you know, in the darker um, and 555, 566 um, was also mixed in there. 1221 is kind of my go-to when I'm looking for a nice amount of control, but not go crazy. Um, I used to be a huge control freak and I was always just using ash, 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 like pure ash. Um, and it's fine, but sometimes you don't get the light reflection that you're looking for. So I've, I've learned over 27 years that it's better to go a little light and then be able to come back down on top of it than to have not gotten light enough to begin with. Um, because then if I want to make it lighter down the road, bleach is my only option, right? Let's see here. Um, here's some 12 series also just playing my, my client Mackenzie. Um, she's actually a natural level five, quite dense, um, thick hair. And that is, that's high lift. Um, again, creating different tones. Obviously her pink on her ends was decolorized, but it was fun to create something a little bit more fashion forward um, by being able to utilize those 12 series and give her something um, much lighter, brighter and warmer, like a sunshiny blonde. Um, sometimes it's so much prettier than just white blonde. Um, I had to throw a couple pictures of me in there because I'm a natural level four that is like dead set on always being lighter. Um, so for a while, um, I, and this is actually when I first switched um, over to Ref, and I was blown away by the strength of their high lifts and how light I can get myself. So you guys, those ends, yes, the ends are decolorized. That scalp is not, and I am a natural level four scout's honor. And I was utilizing 1221 and 622 with a 40 volume. And it was awesome. I got this amazing like rose goldy, but it was definitely more rose for probably the first two weeks. And then as I shampooed, it just kind of morphed into a really soft, girly rose gold that I loved, but I was doing my color every three weeks. So it was a pink that I could actually maintain and it was fun to be able to do. So I hope I'm just giving you guys some ideas or inspiration like, oh, I never thought about using it this way or that way. Um, the directs stick amazing to hair that has had the 12 series um, versus bleach. And sometimes, like I've always said, all of the direct dyes that Ref has um, give you an amazing color at a level eight. So again, 12 series might be what you want to lighten the hair with and not necessarily always feel like you have to use bleach. 
Jesse, can you see that question from Connie? She says, can you make an alkaline gloss with the 12 series? I would, um, I would not make an alkaline gloss with the 12 series. And here's my reason why. The 12 series, the way they are made is technically to always to you really want to mix them in a two and a half parts um, developer but it's also that the 12 series have a higher ammonia content than the one through 10 shades so if i've already decolorized the hair um, i wouldn't want to take another higher ammonia product and lay it on top of the hair again um, Obviously, we know that if we do an alkaline glaze, we're choosing something that it has ammonia in it, but the one through tens have less um, ammonia than your 12 series. So I would opt to do choose a one through 10 as a gloss. Oops, there we go. Again, um, here is 12 series, right? Um, being utilized and creating this light, bright, translucent pink, um, which I think is great um, and totally doable. And then obviously foils were done um, while that 12 series sat, but how cool is that to be able to create that kind of dimension um, in the hair? and not have to use bleach on the entire head. And then again, this is my client Mackenzie again, this was a 12 series and then the directs laying over the top of it and how you can utilize um, 12 series to lighten the hair, but not lighten it to the point that bleach would. Um, most of the directs, you don't need to get the hair necessarily to a level 10 unless you're looking to create pastels. Um, but when I'm you know, mixing shades even like this, both of those are diluted forms of the directs. We still got this amazing uptake and she loves that I don't always have to use bleach on her hair. The girl that I'm working on today, these are both of her sisters. And so you can see um, just taking level two hair, their dimension um, or lightness was put in with decolorizer, but their bases and background colors, meaning the areas that you guys are seeing closer to the scalp, that's all 12 series. Um, and they are both natural level two. So 12 series is pretty amazing, you guys. And having that option of something that will lift me light and bright, um, give me some fun, tonality that I can create different tones, right? So one of the sisters really wanted to be more, um, I guess, consumer friendly, right? And the other one was like, do whatever you want. If you want to, you know, put some fashion colors in there, you can. So we kind of leaned her more that lavender, lilac -y, rose gold, mushroom brown. Like we were just like, let's just see what happens. It was fun. Um, and I was able to achieve this so much easier by incorporating 12 series as my main tool and my powdered lightener out through the ends. Um, so I see flashing here. Baba milk tea. Baba milk tea. I don't know what that means. Okay, next one. Again, things that were done with 12 series. Um, girl on the left, natural level two, um, the thickest, coarsest hair I've ever worked on. Again, you can see in my goal um, for base was to get her kind of up into a level six world. Um, and quite ashy. I was pleasantly surprised. Let me just see. Korean pop like to use those names. It's 
an Asian drink and the shades. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. I'm going to have to look into this. Um, obviously decolorized with powder lightener out through her ends. Um, my client in the middle, she is a natural level, um, five, six, her background is 12 series. Then we use powdered lightener, um, balayaged out through some of her ends and gloss everything together at the bowl. Again, random picture of me, but I think it's, I should have a picture of me as a brunette somewhere there out there, there is, but, um, I mean, I'm kind of like Natalie's um, screenshot, like the base up there. I mean, I'm pretty dark. I'm I'm frog fur. It's very fine, but it is a level four. Um, and so that base on me was um, equal parts 12 to one, 12 one one and 40 volume. And then I would just highlight with powdered lightener to get that lighter, brighter dimension out there, but it was awesome for my base. Again, we talked about how mixing is really important. So when you are looking to have the high lift do its maximum lift with maximum control, right? Now I've showed you formulas where I might not be maximum lift, but I am maximum control or vice versa based on um, if I am a pure 12 series formula, if I've added in a little bit of the pastels or the one through tens in there, um, that all depends. And I always say, if you know what you're doing and why you're making that choice, then use it. But if someone were to say, well, why did you do that? And you were like, I don't really know, then no. <laughs> Be able to answer why, why you're doing it. Example, my client, Michelle, level two, thick, dense hair, right? Coarse. Um, is a natural level two. And I'm trying to get her to a um, believable, I mean, in a real world, if she's at a six, I'm going to be really happy. Um, I'd rather get her a little bit too light and be able to come back down on top of it. So the 1211 is in there for that boost, that lightness um, and that control, right? And I used it with 40 volume, but I also went equal parts to 611. So the whole idea is utilize the 40 volume and the 12 series to get me really, really light, right? And then come back down on top of it with my 611. Now I know from working on her sisters that um, because of the coarseness of the hair, um, they expose crazy dark red orange underlying pigments. And it's definitely more of a red orange than an orange. So that's why I chose Jade. So Jade is in there and it's, I'm using it to really try to put the smack down on some of the red orange um, underlying pigments that are exposed in the process of taking a level two to a level six in one step. Um, so for creative reasons, I went above and beyond by five grams with the Jade in that formula. But normally and traditionally, you will always mix your high lift 12 series or your neutral booster um, one part color to two and a half parts, 30 or 40 volume. Some people have asked, well, can I mix the 12 series with um, in just a one to one and a half? It's meant and formulated and made by the chemists to actually only be mixed in that two and a half times. So when you start really messing and really backing off, um, your developers or people have asked, well, what if I just want to mix 12 one one with 20 volume? Then choose a, a level seven or eight in your regular line, one through 10, and you'll be happier with the results. Application, um, because it's working off of just like a bleach and tone, I always say my 12 series clients in my salon, um, we have our some of our color service categorized. And so I have a high blonde um, service category. This includes my bleach and tones and all of my 12 series because they're a max four week retouch. So we have a long consultation so that they understand that the only way I can get them 
um, to that color and achieve it and maintain it is if I see them every four weeks for a retouch because we're working off the soft keratin. When we start getting out and overlapping into hard keratin, that's where banding and funk happens. And then we as hairdressers, and I all know that we've done it, right? The client comes in, she waited 12 weeks, eight weeks, whatever the case may be. We put the color on, we rinse her and there's a band. So then we foil it and we don't charge her because we feel bad. If we have a really strong consultation with the clients, it will be a non-issue, okay? Um, isolated, meaning you can, your most lift will be isolated um, in a foil, in paper, in mesh, in um, saran wrap, whatever it is you like to isolate inside of, right? And then you can also balayage with it. It's amazing for balayage. You can melt because of its creamy consistency. Um, it's really great if you're not very strong at feathering or doing your bali work. Um, and that's, that's just how it is. I can't believe how many hairdressers are like, I suck at trying to blur and feather and blend um, with bleach. I just do. It doesn't matter how long I try. So switch to something creamy. And it makes more sense that we go from dark into mid into light, right? Um, so you can bally with it or melt with it too. Processing time is 50 minutes. For 12 series to do what they truly need to do, 50 minutes. Remember when you're looking for maximum lift, maximum control, if you, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We talked about the first 15 minutes were lifting and the last 30 to 40 minutes were depositing down. So if I let my client sit for 40 minutes, right? Or 30, 35 minutes, I'm not getting all of that deposit down, that oxidation of those artificial pigments. So I might end up warmer um, and brassier than I wanted to be. So make sure that you let it process for the full 50 minutes. Now, if it's in tin foil, which gives us the most heat and kind of speeds things up, I would say that you're probably fine at 40. Um, but if it's an on scalp application, set that timer for 50 minutes. If they sit for 60, it's okay. They're not gonna revert back um, or anything like that. I have all my high blondes are a 30 minute application because we take thin, tiny little sections, right? We do double saturation, and then I do a 60 minute processing time um, in my books. So 50 minutes, let it do its thing. Don't try to rinse it early, um, especially if you're looking for a the most control you can get. And then remember you guys, when you think about the 12 series, it's golden, it's warm, it's bronzy. Um, it's caramely butterscotchy tones. And I think we all have tons of clients that that's exactly what they're going for. So if I can have anybody today give a thumbs up or send it in the messages that you are going to sneak one or two um, formulas into your existing clients and their foils, I think that that would be awesome. Because like I said, once you guys see what it does, um, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Um, and just know if you're looking for extremely cool, ashy end results, then choose another product. But light, bright, sunshiny colors, I think you guys are really going to enjoy the 12 series. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jesse. Yes. Um, yeah, I would love, well, Jesse, you're going to post some of that in the Rough Salon Professional page, the um, after of your... Um, Yes, customer client, client that's okay yeah. perfect we'll look forward to that and then if anybody tries this any suggestions that jesse had would love for you to post it in the um ref salon professional page um i'll go ahead and approve you and you can share your work and um always give positive feedback to everybody and it's just a great way to kind of try something new and use what you learned awesome awesome yeah, thank you so much, Jesse. We appreciate thank always you. your Take time. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye, all.
Tchau.